Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about an important topic, pain classification. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. First, what is pain? Pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage and it is a fifth vital sign. Next, let's look on pain classification. How is pain classified? Pain is classified under three criteria. First comes underlying etiology which refers to the source of the experienced pain. Next, pain can also be classified by its duration. And next, Pain is classified by its intensity, intensity which refers to the degree or level of the pain experience. Let's look into it one by one. First comes underlying etiology. With underlying etiology, pain can be classified into nociceptive, inflammatory and neuropathic. First let's discuss on nociceptive. Nociceptive pain is the result of direct tissue injury from a noxious stimulus and it is further classified into somatic and visceral pain. Let's look into its description, character and example one by one. Somatic pain. Somatic pain is generally described as musculoskeletal pain. Many nerves supply the muscles, bone and other soft tissues. Somatic pain is generally in the muscles, bones or soft tissues as discussed before. How is it characterized? It is characterized as well localized intermittent or constant and described as aching, gnawing or throbbing pain or cramping pain. It gets sharp and worse with movement. For example, superficial lacerations, superficial burns, superficial abscess. Now comes visceral pain. Visceral pain is a dull ache that stems from the internal organs. How is visceral pain caused? Visceral pain results from the activation of nociceptors of the thoracic, pelvic or abdominal viscera. It is often associated with marked autonomic phenomena including pallor, profuse sweating, nausea, GI disturbances and changes in body temperature, blood pressure and heart rate. How is it characterized? It can be constant or intermittent, sharp or dull, deep poorly localized, vague and diffused pain. Examples of visceral pain include appendicitis, peptic ulcer disease, diverticulitis, endometriosis and urethral stones. And here comes inflammatory pain. Inflammatory pain is the result of released inflammatory mediators that control nociceptive input and are released at sites of tissue inflammation. Inflammatory pain is characterized by five classic symptoms, redness, heat, swelling, loss of function, and pain. Looking into the character of inflammatory pain, inflammatory pain is characterized by dull, throbbing feeling or a constant pulsating pain. Few examples of inflammatory pain include appendicitis, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, and late stage of burn healing. Next comes neuropathic pain. Now, as the name goes, neuropathic pain is the result of injury to nerves leading to an alteration in sensory transmission. Neuropathic pain may be divided into peripheral neuropathic pain, central neuropathic pain, or mixed neuropathic pain. Peripheral neuropathy is a result of damage to the nerves located outside of the brain and spinal cord. This often causes weakness, numbness, and pain usually in the hands and feet. Example of neuropathic pain includes diabetes. Central chronic neuropathic pain can develop as a result of spinal cord or brain injury, stroke or multiple sclerosis. Next, let's discuss classification of pain based on the duration. Based on the duration, it is classified into acute and chronic pain. Acute pain is defined as lasting less than 3 months and it is neurophysiological response to noxious injury that should result with normal healing. Examples of acute pain includes post-operative pain, fractured bones, appendicitis, crush injury to finger, labor or delivery pain. Chronic pain is defined as lasting more than 3 months or beyond the expected course of an acute disease or after complete tissue healing. 
Few examples of chronic pain includes low back pain, neck pain, and chronic pancreatitis. Next comes classification of pain based on pain intensity. Pain intensity is determined by pain assessment scores in combination with history and physical examination. Pain intensity is subjective and may vary from one patient to another. Pain scales are used to assess and quantify the intensity of a patient's pain. Based on this, it is classified into mild, moderate, and severe. In mild, the patient's score of pain ranges from 1 to 3. In moderate, the pain score ranges between 4 and 6. And in severe pain, the score ranges between 7 and 10. So here you go with the classification of pain. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it, and subscribe it. And do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.